Good morning. Welcome to worship today. My name is Dory Newcomer and I am the lead pastor here at the Lima United Methodist Church. And what a joy to be able to celebrate on this third Sunday of Advent. Our scripture memory verse for the month of December is Psalm 130 verse 6. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Our focus today is on patience and finding the joy in the waiting. I pray you'll be richly blessed by worship today. Hello, my name is Nancy Ellis, and this is my husband, Tom. As we watch and wait for Christ's coming, we light the candles of the Advent wreath. We lit the first candle for anticipation. We lit the second week for hope. This week, we light the third candle, which is traditionally colored pink to symbolize joy. Today, our focus will be on patience. Hear these words from James, chapter five, verses seven and eight. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient the farmer is for the autumn and spring rain. You look to be patient and stand firm, for the Lord's coming is near. O come, Emmanuel, come. Amen. Okay, the opening prayer this morning. Holy patience, that deep, calm resistance against the riptide of the season's hurry, while swell upon swell of Christmas laps at every edge of our lives, you call us to an Advent way of living. Deep calling to deep, love bearing love, word becoming flesh, slow labored beloved patience. Come, teach us to trust in Advent's buoyancy, suspend us, outreach for the coming of the Christ. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is from Luke 1, 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has, regarded for the, for he has regard for the humble state of his bondservant. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation towards those that fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who were, poor in, were proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servants, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. Here ends the reading of the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Pastor Karen Barkowski. I'm excited to be in worship with you today. So. Here we are in the third week of Advent, the third week of this season of waiting. I don't know about you, but I feel like in some ways I've spent the entirety of 2020 waiting, waiting for something, for this virus to go away, waiting for the time that we can gather together again, waiting for the times that I can give hugs. Oh, I miss hugs. Waiting, waiting, and waiting. You know, we spend a whole bunch of our lives waiting. <laughs> Did you know that an average person spends a total of about two weeks in a lifetime waiting at a red light? Or 43 days in a lifetime waiting on hold on our phone? On average, we spend 21 minutes 
each time we wait for our significant other to be ready to go out somewhere. We spend 38 hours a year in traffic, six months of our lifetime waiting in line for something. And if you take the bus or the train, you will likely spend an average of 27 days of your life waiting on that platform or in that bus station. How are you at waiting? Now, come on, be honest. <laughs> if you don't know how you are, I think you should just ask your best friend or your spouse or your kids or your coworkers. Do you wait well? We chose this book, Simply Wait, by Pamela Hawkins, as our study and our structure for this Advent season. Simply wait. Simply? Is waiting simple for you? Now, it might depend on what you're waiting for, right? Sometimes we know that there are things that we need to wait for that are really worth waiting for. For our family member to return home after serving in the armed forces. For our week of vacation coming up or a really cool trip that we planned. For the oven timer to go off when we have an awesome turkey roasting in there. When we're waiting for the day for a party or a wedding or a reunion to show up on our calendar. But my question is still this. Are you good at waiting? Are you the person who strikes up a conversation with anyone and whoever might be in line with you? Are you the person who taps their fingers incessantly on the steering wheel at a red light? Are you the person who's always looking at the time, like maybe every five seconds, to see when the bus is going to come down the street? This week's word from our book and the focus of our message this week is patience. I think patience can be defined as waiting well. Waiting well. Someone who has the who is patient is has the ability to wait well. And on the flip side, those who are impatient wait poorly. Now the waiting part is inevitable, right? The waiting is part of life. But how we wait determines whether or not we are patient. So here in the third week of Advent, the third week of waiting, have you practiced patience? Have you practiced waiting well? This third Sunday of Advent is traditionally dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. We remember who she was and how her obedience and willingness taught us how to answer God's call. But what does Mary have to teach us about waiting or waiting well? How does Mary's story help us to learn to be patient? Let's remember what we already know about Mary's story. She was a very young woman, maybe even just 14 years old, from a pretty small and plain town named Nazareth. Like most other girls her age, she was engaged. She was already in a waiting period. She's engaged and waiting to be married. In the culture of that time, that engagement lasted about a year. The man and the woman were really already presumed to be married. This was a, a time of preparation, a time of negotiation between the families, a time of waiting. So here's Mary, living a rather predictable life doing what she had already always assumed that she would do at her age. She was pretty much minding her own business, just waiting like she was expected to. That is, until the angel Gabriel showed up and what, you, you know, 
told her that she was going to have a baby, that she was going to name him Jesus, and that he was going to be the savior of the world. Yup, no big deal, right? Just another day in Nazareth. Mary went quickly from waiting to be married and waiting to move into this simple life in this small town to waiting to be the mother of the Son of God. Here's what I always wondered about Mary. Did, did she really not freak out? Did she really not get scared and anxious and defensive? Did she not cry? I mean, I'm a crier, so I know I would have cried. <laughs> I mean, the angel didn't just tell her that Jesus was going to show up and be part of her family. No, she, the angel told Mary that she was going to be pregnant with Jesus for nine months. That her belly was going to get really big. People were going to notice and talk about her. She was going to get back pain and maybe morning sickness. She was going to crave weird foods and she might even have trouble sleeping. For nine months, she would have to wait for this baby to be born. Did she really just peacefully say to the angel those beautiful words? Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Hmm. We don't get any more information about Mary's initial response, so we're just left wondering at this part of the story. But we know that Mary travels to see her cousin Elizabeth, who's also expecting a child. Both women demonstrate how God can do the impossible. Elizabeth was well beyond childbearing age, and Mary was pregnant as a virgin. Miracles all around. Mary arrives at Elizabeth's house, and Elizabeth's baby jumps in her womb. Elizabeth says, he leapt for joy. And how does Mary respond to this? This we know. She sings. In my Bible, this section of scripture is called Mary's Song of Praise. It's here that we get a glimpse into how Mary is really handling the news. I think it's here that we can see Mary's response to having to wait for the birth of Jesus. It is here how we see how Mary practices patience. Mary's ability to wait well. Maybe Mary's responses can help us learn how we can wait well, how we can even be patient. First of all, Mary is obviously joyful. Despite all the craziness, despite everything that people might be saying about her and Joseph, despite her fears, despite her questions, despite her times of disbelief, she rejoices in God. She praises God with her song. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord. I rejoice in God, my Savior. The Mighty One has done great things. Mary is pregnant with Jesus, waiting for nine months as he grows inside her, waiting after hearing from God through an angel. Mary chooses to spend her time waiting, praising God, being joyful and singing. Psalm 100 says that we should come into the presence of God with singing. The very presence of God was within Mary. Mary was carrying the presence of God and she chose joy. Our key verse today is from Isaiah chapter 35. It says, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, 
and the sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The scripture tells us that the anecdote to sorrow and sighing is singing and joy and gladness. Who sighs when they're impatient? <laughs> Come on, I think we all might do that. But what if we sang instead? What if when we were feeling impatient, like we weren't waiting well, what if we sang? Sang praises to God. You don't know what to sing? How about praise God from whom all blessings flow? Or how great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God. Or holy is the Lord God Almighty. How would that change how we wait? We light the third candle on our Advent wreath today. Traditionally, the candle of joy. How about that? Mary's story paired with this candle of joy. There can be joy in our waiting, and our waiting can be made well if we choose joy. Now, Mary's song also remembers God's promises. Mary sings, his God's mercy is generation to generation. This song isn't just about Mary's circumstances. It's not just about Mary's time and place. This is about our circumstances, our time and place, yours and mine. Mary relies on the promises of, that God already made. Mary spends time remembering that God said that he would keep his promise, that he would fulfill his promise, and that these promises would last forever. Mary spends time waiting with promise. This patience, this waiting well for Mary is inspired by trusting that God will fulfill God's promises. What if when we're feeling impatient, like we're not waiting well, what if we remembered God's promises? What if we said out loud the verses of Romans 8:28? We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Or Isaiah 41.10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. How would that change how we wait? Finally, Mary's song reflects on how God is capable of doing the unexpected, the impossible. Mary sings about God scattering the proud, bringing down the powerful and lifting up the lowly, serving the hungry and the humble and sending away the arrogant and the rich. We get a glimpse here of what we know that Jesus will later teach us about the kingdom of God we're the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God will be so different than what we know or even what we can imagine. Things will be upside down, inverted. The poor will be rich, the weak strong, the blind will see, and justice will prevail. The kingdom of God, as we learned last week from Pastor Dory, will have smooth roads no potholes, no locusts around destroying everything in sight. God's kingdom levels the playing field for everyone. Mary imagines how things can be so different from how they are now. Mary reflects on the future that God has designed. What if when we're feeling impatient, when we're not 
feeling like we're waiting well? What if we reflect on God's will, on God's plan, on God's ability to do what we cannot imagine? We know that God desires earth to be like heaven. We know that the kingdom of God was, is, and is to come. That means we don't have to wait for it, my friends. We get to experience glimpses of the kingdom of God in our families, in our communities, in our churches, and in our world. We get to witness the work of God through God's people when there's reconciliation and forgiveness. We get to contribute by being justice seekers and peacemakers. So how about when we're impatient? When we are not waiting well, we pray the Lord's Prayer with a special emphasis on that line, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we look for the kingdom of God in our very midst. How would that change how we wait? Now, not all waiting is the same. I get that. <laughs> It seems a lot easier to wait when there's a known outcome, right? Easier to wait for something when we know the outcome will be good. Certainly harder to wait when we know that when we're the outcome is unknown. When we don't know if the outcome will be good or bad. Easier to wait for a vacation than for medical test results. Easier to wait at a red light than in a five-mile traffic jam. Advent is a time of waiting. But we get to know what's coming. We know that the birth of Jesus Christ as a baby, this Jesus Christ who will grow up to teach and serve, who will then die on the cross and rise again, all happens to show us God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, and God's grace. So we know the outcome, but yet we still wait. Today, we are right smack in the midst of the waiting period. The candles on the altar bookend this waiting period. The time between when Jesus came and when Jesus will come again. Will we choose to spend this time waiting well? Being patient? Will we be filled with joy and sing? Will we rely on the promises of God in this time? Will we reflect? on how God is working in this moment. I wonder what might happen to us if we use this time of waiting to practice waiting well. I wonder how our outlook, how our attitude, how our mood might just be changed if we practice waiting well. I wonder how we might experience God in new and beautiful ways. And I wonder how we might just see our own situations so differently if we just practice waiting well. If we wait with joyful singing. If we wait remembering God's promises. If we wait in reflection on how God has the ability to transform even the unexpected and the impossible. To God be the glory. Amen.
great Thanksgiving. Uh, I know we got a few pictures, uh, not a lot, but we got a few. Uh, it's not too late. If you have some pictures of your Thanksgiving feast, uh, please feel free to send them in. Uh, remember, the address is limaholidaypictures at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to take all those pictures. We're going to put them all together. We're going to uh, put some music in the background. And this is our way of sharing our holidays with each other. Again, it's not too late. I'm sure uh, many of you have uh, your decorations up. You can see behind me, I have my Christmas tree. We're going to get a picture of that. We're going to put it in the mix. Um, this is one way for us to be able to share those times and the holidays together. You can take pictures of your decorations, of each other, of yourselves opening presents on Christmas morning, whatever it is, whatever, however you're celebrating that holiday, uh, share it with the rest of the congregation and show us how you're doing it. And if you're shy, you don't have to take a picture of yourself. Take a picture of your tree. Take a picture of the ham that you cooked or the turkey or whatever it is you had for dinner and uh, send it in. People love to take pictures of their food and post them on Facebook. I'm just saying send them in to us. Remember, it's Lima Holiday Pictures at gmail.com. Um, share the holiday spirit. So happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Thanks. Receive this benediction. In Galatians 5, we read Paul's writing where he says that the fruit of the Spirit includes patience. Did you hear that? That patience is a gift from God. When God is present in us, when we are allowing the Spirit to move within us, patience will be the fruit. So go from this place to cultivate that fruit. Praise God with song. Allow God into your circumstances and imagine alongside with God what is possible, even when it seems impossible. Go with this strength, with this promise, with this confidence that God is with us. Go into this place of darkness as a, as a light to shine this beautiful good news. Amen.